you so much for joining us. I'm Roxanne Vargas. Devices, technology, the dawn of social media platforms and applications have really changed the way that we connect, how we communicate and share. But when the relationship with social media turns toxic, lives are literally destroyed or even lost. From parents to teachers, mental health experts, and the search to find a healthy balance with social media, that continues. But one 19-year-old could not control the need to keep logging on. Social media, scroll, swipe, tap, save, forward, laugh, cry, connect. The social media experience taps all of our senses with an endless opportunity to share with friends, loved ones, the world. But it could also open the door to empty promises, a lack of likes, bullying, perceptions of reality, and studies show our brains are feeling that impact. It's really about a preoccupation with and uh, compulsive use of social media. SMA, social media addiction, an uncontrollable urge to log on and log out of the basics of life. We're talking about excessive isolation. We're talking about uh, lack of engagement, real social engagement with real people in live time. Uh, we're talking about abandoning uh, activities that, that people used to derive pleasure from. Uh, we're talking about a disruption in the capacity to stay attuned. Meet Jimena. She's 19 with family roots in Spain, grew up in Chicago. And like many other kids or adolescents you might know, Jimena says she got connected with a cell phone at 13, access to social media at 15. A new world of entertainment and immediate gratification, Jimena tells us, right at her fingertips. When did your relationship with, with social media or technology, when did that start? Well, I've been starting using my phone since um, 2018, but uh, it got worse in 2020. And when you say it got worse, what do you mean? What happened? All of the things that I'm working in Solagria, such as um, relationships, hygiene, taking care of myself, emotionally and mentally, like emotional and mentally and relationships and even spiritually. Regular rituals that Jimena tells me slowly stopped as she lost herself in Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp. Did you notice that there was starting to be a change in you with social media that you started to see a disconnect with loved ones, a disconnect with yourself. Did you notice yeah. that the change happened? Yes. The last months in at my house, uh, before coming here, I noticed how every single person that I was close to, I don't know, I didn't have a really relationship with those loved ones. That's Jimena's mother, Ines, who says her daughter is fun and funny, loves dance and fashion. But she says Jimena became addicted to her device, connected for 20 hours a day. Were you were you sleeping? Not really. I mean, oh, during the day, but it's just like I didn't have a schedule. I didn't have like a routine. So I would I would spend my whole night on the phone and on the device, and then sleep between hours now and then during the day. It's grooming, like taking care of yourself, was that stuff that kind of. No, no. Giving a priority. A mother's cry for help, and she found it here. On a 200-acre campus in Utah called Solegria, a rehab program for adults and teens who want to be independent but just aren't ready yet. We, we believe that addiction, it's not just a matter of, like, taking something away because they're eventually going to come back into the real world and come back into life and want to get back into those things. Uh, however, our approach to addiction and, and how to help these individuals is that we got to replace it with stuff. Replaces it with outdoor activity, sports, responsibilities like making a bed, regain a healthy routine. A study just released by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services says up to 95% of teens between 13 and 17 say they use a social media platform and a third say they are engaged constantly. A similar study in 2019 says teens who are scrolling more than three hours a day face double the risk of developing depression and anxiety. Doctor, what actually happens to your brain 
and similar to uh, a slot machine where there's this rush from a reward there's also an intermittent lack of reward so if you're talking about uh social media engagement where you're on your platform you post something you get a like you get five likes you see that climb up and then there's a pause right people stop being attuned to what you post their attention shifts to something else and then you began to you begin to anticipate when others will re-engage with your platform and get more likes what is it that you got out of social media that would make you want to keep going back to that just um, the entertainment the disconnection of everything Jimena tells me she seemingly disconnected from the real world immersing into this one Jimena has been at this facility for a year and a half now learning to look up let go and in Jimena's case, learn to disconnect and reconnect with a healthy relationship with technology and social media. So where yeah. are you now in your journey? How are you doing there at Soligria? I'm, I'm improving. Um, I'm doing this for my own good. And um, I still have troubles and challenges, but I'm still going. So you just heard Jimena's story and she is in recovery as she continues to navigate a new relationship with social media, but not all are lucky. There is one mother who wants to share her daughter's dark story in hope of bringing light to others. Every day is something different. You don't know where your emotions will be, you know, what can trigger. Tammy Rodriguez says her daughter Selena was spirited. She shined on stage dancing. She said she would light up a room. The emotions, the grief is very hard. Tammy says Selena's relationship with technology started around seven, watching videos on a tablet. As she got a little older, well, you know, I ended up getting her a phone. And when, you know, on there, again, in the beginning, everything was just the games and videos. But then you could start seeing a change. Once she started posting them, I started you know, slowly over time, seeing her change and seeing her really start questioning herself. Um, she, you know, her self-confidence was dwindling. She just was just changing. Everything about her was changing. Tammy says Selena became violent, attacking her little sister and her when a phone was taken away. She wasn't sleeping hardly at all. Um, she wasn't eating. She had become... Um, well, she was developing an eating disorder. Really, just everything in her world just depended on those devices. She didn't want to go anywhere unless she could bring it with her. Though Tammy says she had access to Selena's accounts, she kept discovering hidden ones. Selena would wake up with multiple devices. The last two months of her life were complete chaos. Uh, I have no other way that I can really put it. She wasn't the Selena that we knew. You know, she really... I wanted that attention at all times, whether it was positive or negative. She thrived on that attention. They learned Selena was being bullied. Photos leaked to other students that Selena had sent via Snapchat. Then one morning, Tammy noticed Selena's mood swings were particularly rough. Tammy reached out around noon to Selena. Nothing. She checked in with Selena later. No response. Horrific. It's just something that you just never imagined can possibly happen in your world. Selena tragically died by suicide July 2021. She was 11. We found out that she was actually um, being um, contacted by men, adult men, that uh, were then getting pictures from her and exploiting her. And I had no idea that that was going on. And that's what I think was even bigger than the bullying piece of it. How dark can this go? It can go extremely dark. I, I mean, it's not, it's not a hyperbolic to compare this to any other substance use disorder where you have a beginning, which is seemingly somewhat innocuous. You're engaged with it. There's some reward. It doesn't seem particularly risky. On the other end of the spectrum, uh, 
being terrorized or bullied by somebody who doesn't like what you posted. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Vivek Murthy calling on Congress to mandate warning labels on social media platforms, saying it could harm a teen's mental health. Mr. Zuckerberg, you and the companies before us, I know you don't mean to, it to be so, but you have blood on your hands. Tammy stood side by side with other parents who shared her pain on the floor of Congress and before the founders of social media platforms, demanding accountability. The Rodriguez family sued the company's Meta and Snap. The lawsuit alleges that Meta invests millions of dollars in consciously designing addictive, unsafe, and harmful social networks for the health of children and adolescents. In response to this lawsuit, Meta responded to us, writing in part, quote, we want to assure every parent that we take their interests seriously in our work to help teenagers have a safe online experience. And for Snap, a spokesperson responded to us saying in part, quote, while we cannot comment on any specifics of this ongoing litigation, nothing is more important to us than the well-being of our community. This is why we invested so much and are going to continue doing industry big efforts. It was a horrible apology, or I say apology, because that wasn't an apology to me. Um, I had my one moment where I was able to lock eyes with him and I held her picture up. You know, I don't know if it matters to him, but it mattered to me to hold her picture there and show him who we lost because of their product. Governor Ron DeSantis recently signing a law prohibiting minors under 14 from having access to these platforms. But the question is, how is that enforced? We shouldn't be losing kids that are eight, nine, ten years old. I mean, and shouldn't be losing any kids, but they're getting younger and younger. Dr. Adam Scholey tells me that the reason adolescents and teens are so vulnerable, it's basic science. He tells me our brains, they're developing until 20 or 25 in some cases. That process is called pruning. Social media addiction or substance abuse can interrupt that development. So what about solutions? I asked the doctor and he said limited screen time, screen free zones like at the dinner table, for example, and looking out for red flags like isolation, a change of mood, lack of sleep. If you or someone you know are struggling with thoughts of suicide or hurting yourself, you can always call or text the suicide and crisis lifeline 24 seven at 988. Thank you so much for watching this NBC6 special, Addicted Children. We hope the young people who need help get access to live a healthier and successful life. I'm Roxanne Vargas. We'll see you next time.